Doug. And I'm Kathy. And this, of course, is Maggie May. <laughs> and as you can see behind us, we're at the Florida State Fairgrounds, ready to kick off our coverage to you of the Florida RV Super Show. If you're not familiar with the name Volta Power Systems, you're about to become very familiar with them. They're kind of revolutionizing the way we boondock and we handle RVs. They've been working with companies like Overlander, Tiffin, Winnebago, and now Grand Design. And meeting with us today is Jack Johnson, co-founder of Volta, and he's going to let you know what this amazing setup is all about. All right. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, thanks, Jack. Thanks for coming by today. Uh, my name is Jack Johnson. I'm with uh, Volta Power Systems. I'm the CTO and co-founder. And we're here today at the Grand Design booth. And what you're seeing here is a concept we call Adventure Without Limits. And we have put together uh, an energy system um, using the latest in electric vehicle battery technology to build a system that's generator free, but also has that power you want to run everything. And what you're looking at here is a battery pack. Um, this lower unit is 18 kilowatt hours, and we have another 18 kilowatt hours up here for the show. Uh, that's 36,000 watt hours, or 36 kilowatt hours, on a towable uh, toy hauler. And what's really cool about this system is these in, are inverter chargers. And normally, you think an inverter, a big inverter, might be 2,000 watts. Well, these are 3.2 kilowatts each, and they're synced to make 240. So you've got equivalent here of a little over six and a half kilowatts of true 240 split phase energy. And this combines with about 2200 watts of solar on the roof and on top of that the truck has been outfitted with our power generation capability from our industrial side of the business so we do a lot of industrial work trucks we usually micro hybridize a lot of vehicles well this vehicle can produce running down the road almost 9,000 watts of power off the off the specially built alternator uh, because we run at a higher voltage all of our systems run at 51 volts nominal 58 volts on the high side and we do that to step up the power but at the same time keep it below the high voltage threshold so everything's touch safe um, much more like a 12 volt world but a lot of efficiencies come from that now how does the truck connect into this sure come on over here and I'll show you how that works <clears throat> so this is a, a an example of what we call our nitro connect system but this is a you know a metallized um, EV style connector and then these are this is a alternator controller this would be mounted inside the truck it's out here for display only these are the standard uh, RAM components so really we just added this ran a separate line up to the uh, um, alternator and then this is the communication that the battery pack uses to run the alternator uh, from the trailer and this main power connections and this will bring in at a maximum 9,000 watts at high idle you know if you park the truck and you need to charge it up it'll make 4,800 watts at high idle wow. so it's more than even more than a regular generator now the uh, alternator modification that you do does that do anything as far as the vehicle warranty or anything that way well that's the nice thing what we do is we work with like Ram Ram commercial Mercedes-Benz um, their upfitter requirements and, our, and we make sure that we don't put any extra drag on the engine and we don't interface with their controls. And what that means is the only thing we connect to is a belt and we fit within their upfitter guidelines. This means it stays independent and it's not um, getting into any of their concerns for load. Um, some customers ask, well, well, Volta only, why doesn't it charge at base idle? Well, we don't charge at base idle on purpose so that it doesn't mess with the uh, OEM emissions because they're trying to really keep the idle really really low on modern engines so our systems are designed as soon as it goes to high idle it makes maximum as much power as we can at high idle that keeps the oil temperature where it needs to be the oil pressure where it needs to be keeps the airflow through the exhaust system so we don't um, put the OE warranty concerns uh, in in the forefront we make it so that goes away that's great now I know this is on a uh, Dodge Ram where you have this installed is there any brand, uh, any particular brand you have to have or any particular engine choices you have to have? For right now, we're going to start with the Ram Cummins. They're the easiest to convert. Um, we've been working with them and we can use all factory um, based components for uh, the bracketry. Super easy to install. The next one will be a Ford's. And there will be 
certain Fords you can do it on, um, but uh, we've been converting the everything from the F-250s to the 550s for the last six years in the, in the industrial market. Um, so we have kits to do those, but um, it'll take a little bit of time to get it ready for the you know, consumer world. And then uh, after that, we'll be doing General Motors. What's unique is it's a one button push. You hit the button, everything will turn on, including the inverters, which is a little backwards. But we do that out of convenience. If you want to go in, you can shut the inverters off and you'll get a lot more run time with the inverters off. But you can see right now, something's running. I gotta go find out what's running. We're burning 1,750 watts right now. And that if it burns 750, we got 22.8 hours of runtime if we continue to burn 1,700 watts. And then how long does it take with the truck running to get it back up to? Well, it'll be dependent on what you're running. If, if you're at high idle, it makes 4,800 watts. If you're not running anything in the coach, then the 4,800 watts will go into the tank at 4,800 watts per hour. And then your time will be a function of um, that rate. Now, if you're pull, pulling 3,000 watts at the same time you're putting 4,800 in, then you're only going to get the difference going into the tank. Um, the biggest thing for folks to start thinking about batteries, don't think in amp hours anymore. Don't think, just learn to talk in watt hours. And when you talk in watt hours, everything starts to make sense. Your, your, your refrigerator is in watts. Your microwave is watts. Mm -hmm. Everything you buy is rated in watts. Well, it's kind of hard to take watts to amp hours. Well, the magic of an amp hour is volts. If it's 12 volts time amp hours, that's your watt hours. So volts times amps, multiply those together, that's your total available volume of energy. And then you can figure out how you draw it down. Now, whatever was running, it's still running. I was yep, gonna say. I got to figure out what's been turned on, but we got something running. That's 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 an air conditioning and something else, um, oh, and it just went off. Yeah, and you can see, boom! If we go to that look, we went to 866 hours of runtime. <laughs> no, gee, yeah, that lasted a little while. Uh, now, now the solar's kicked in. You can see uh, we got we got power coming in. Wow. So yeah. Now the pack temperature. How are the batteries cooled? So. Um, we do we we air cool them so the batteries are air cooled um these things are rated up to 2c continuous discharge um and capable up to 15c of charge for sure amount of times in the ev automotive mm -hmm. world but here what we do is we air cool them and uh, uh we do heat them so when it's cold and yesterday it was cold enough here in florida to turn them on the pack heaters were on wow. warming everything up in the morning yesterday it was cold i was not wearing shorts yesterday yeah it was it was cold yesterday uh, but we regulate the the upper back temperature. On. It just kicked back on. Yeah, we got to find out. I wonder what somebody turned on. We'll have to find out what they're huh. running. So this is a class two, 240 uh, charger. So this is a what they call an SAE J nineteen or seventeen seventy two EV charger. I had a plug-in hybrid that used one just like that. Just like this. So with the truck, the trailer, the stored energy, and the solar. Here's your fuel system for your next generation toys. And we have one right here. So we have a Tom car, all electric. It's a 32 kilowatt uh, hour system. Um, this vehicle was originally designed for a mil military. Uh, if you go to their website, you'll see them dropping it out of airplanes and shooting missiles off of it and doing crazy fun stuff. But uh, it's an all electric side by side. <clears throat> and we can charge, we can charge it from the trailer. Now, can you, if you want to get really far out there, can you plug in an electric car yeah. to the system? Oh yeah, we uh, we made it purposely long enough so that you need a plug up electric car, or you got something next to you, you can plug it up and charge wow. from, from short power. Um, you know, this makes it easy too if you roll up and you just got a 50 amp feed, and so you're at campground, you got a 50 amp feed, well, you can pull your car around and decide to plug your car and charge, charge your EV if you've got an EV. Now I'm assuming if you're on a 50 amp feed, it will also trickle charge to some extent the Volta. It's all designed to do that. So once uh, you saw those two big inverters, they're mm -hmm. also the chargers. So once a qualified AC source is identified, they will switch to charge mode and they'll bypass the energy into the coach and any extra thing left over, it'll go into the batteries. And then the inverters are hybrid. Um, these inverters, though, that hybrid, we don't do the hybrid because we offer so much power. If we disqualify, we just switch back over to inverter because we 
traditionally you have a hybrids and all those other things because you're so limited on power. Right. Um, here we've got so much energy storage and then we have so much overage in power, we don't need to finesse it because we just got raw horsepower. That's how we've been doing it. Now, Volta Power Systems, besides all of this, do you do like home battery systems? Well, um, we've really been focused on mobile. Um, you know, our value add is you saw how energy dense those are. Mm -hmm. So um, it's harder to be competitive in the market when, you know, we're concentrating on space, really small, high energy dense product. Well, when you're building for a home, you really don't care so much about energy density. Cost becomes a bigger value yeah. add. So we've done a few, um, but not as many as you see. Most of our stuff's on a mobile application. Yeah, we have family in Louisiana, and they've had countless power outages just because of the hurricanes the last few years. And uh, Ford made a big push there with their little right. uh, hybrid generator they've got in the F-150s now that you can plug it into your home system and power. Right. With what you've got in that truck, if it would be done. I would encourage you to go down to the Storyteller Overland booth as well. They have a, they've, they've taken their system and they have what they call Empower, but we help them with making their van. So their van has 13 kilowatt hours on board. It has um, 6,000 watts of generation and it has an exportable power setup that works with your house. So if you lose power, you just activate the van and the van can run the whole house. That's awesome. Uh, you know, at 3,600 watts, so 30 amps of pure sine 120 um, through the wow. Storyteller vehicles. Jack, is there anything else that you want to share with us about Volta, this setup, and where Volta's going? Well, um, thank you, that's exciting. So Volta, you know, we're seven years old now. Um, I come from the automotive industry, wanted to start Volta and the, and the concept of how do we get this advanced energy technology into the hands of these RV and especially vehicle builders um, when we saw the cost and we, uh, where it takes to actually do a true automotive program, it's in the billions. And uh, you know, we love seeing people learn. We love the debate of what's, what's good, what's bad. and. Um, we encourage people to just come out, read, learn about what's going on in the industry because it's changing all of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. The word kilowatts, kilowatt hours, all these things we didn't know we have to worry about now will become more and more part of people's lives. And, and so, and the whole science fiction of it's almost gone. It's, it's part of our daily life. It's going to be part of your daily life. And we want people to have fun with it and not freak out about it. Mm -hmm. And um, we encourage people to ask questions, keep learning because... Uh, um, yeah, I'm a big, I'm still a big gearhead. I love my hot rods. I'm, I collect muscle cars, but the world's changing and you're going to have to know how this stuff works and how it impacts you every day. And um, we, we like to help teach. So that's Volta. You said one thing earlier that I think is, is the biggest mental block that if you can get past. Uh, people think about the battery capacity and they try to be all technical and you said in the tank. If we think about it as our fuel tank, which is what it is, then it all kind of starts to make a whole lot more sense. Right. And that's really the thing is a lot of people just haven't been, you know, for us, we've been experiencing cars forever. We know by experience, by tactile experience, we know if I fill my tank up, oh, that was 30 gallons, I know how far I can go, but I also instinctively know it's how I drive, am I going up a mountain? We all know that instinctively. Mm -hmm. It's the units, what we've been adjusted to. These units mean very much the same thing, it's just they are a different sounding word. And it's just getting through to the, to the tactile, the experience side that, that people have got to get through. And it'll be funny, in five years it'll be old hat and everyone will just know. That's right. But it's right now, sense. everybody's a little nervous, like, what does all this mean? It's math, it's scary. No, it's not scary. You do it every day, it's just a little bit different. Jack, I want to thank you for taking time with us today, showing us how creative you guys are getting with power and how it's making our life as RVers so much simpler. Well, thanks, Doug, for your time. That was, it was great. All right, thank you. Thanks for watching today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Don't forget to follow us on social media too.